blanket. Hi, I'm Chris Hinkham, and this is The Economy and You. And today, uh, here at Think Tech Hawaii, we've got some special guests that just came in from the mainland. They're, they're, they're getting ready to leave, though, right? Yes. We yeah, are. this is Jennifer Guerrero and also Alonso Alvarez Barreda. That's correct. And you both uh, recently fil finished a film, and you're over here promoting the film? Uh, yeah, I, I mean, I, I've done several films, mm -hmm. uh, but yeah, we're, I'm promoting a few films right now. So. Okay. <laughs> And um, you, you, uh, well, 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 let me say thank you for coming oh, yeah. on the show. So thank short you. notice, thank you both yeah. for coming yeah, no, on the show. Thank you for having us. Yeah. Um, so um, maybe Jennifer, you could start off and sort of tell us a little bit about these films that you're you're over here talking about. Yeah. I mean, I'm I'm also an actor, and then I also uh, work work with uh, Movie to Movement promoting promoting films. Uh -huh. um, so right now we're promoting Man Down. Uh, we're promoting The Longest Road, which is a, a documentary about Syria. Um, and then I, I'm do voiceovers, um, and I have a couple movies coming out next year that I acted in, Driver X, and, uh -huh. um, and a short film, so. Oh, that's awesome. Lots of stuff. <laughs> that's lots of stuff? Cool. Yeah. And so, and you, you, you got into films, how long have you been actually in doing work in films? Well, actually, my mom was an actress, so I grew up on set, I went uh -huh. to school on set, um, and so I always knew that I wanted to be an actress from a young age. I started acting at around you, six. You mean your mother didn't like, no, no way, you're not going into the no. business? No, <laughs> yeah. Absolutely not, really. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, so I mean, I, I basically, since she, I was in the womb, she was acting. Oh my God, so goodness. I grew up on set. Um, but yeah, I've been acting since I was six, doing commercials, and then got into film, TV. Um, so yeah, it's been a, a long career. That's fun. Do you yeah, like it? I love it. Do you? Yeah. Cool, cool. And Alonzo, you're, you've only been at this for what, about 10 years now? Yes, uh, that's, uh, that sounds about right, yeah. Uh -huh. And you're doing more behind the camera work. Exactly. I, I'm not good in front of the camera, as you might tell <laughs> in a few seconds. Oh, uh, really? I mean, I don't know. <laughs> I don't know. Maybe, yeah. Well, you started off. You made some short films. Was that how I, you started? I did, yeah. Um, I, I watched the Shawshank Redemption when I was 12. I love that movie. That's um, a great movie. We were going to be best friends. Uh -huh. And so um, uh, that was it for me. I kind of, that's what got me to turn my face and my attention to filmmaking. And uh -huh. uh, I applied to film schools. Uh, and I got rejected from all of them. Uh, uh, but uh, if you ever watch my film work, you would say the same thing. So okay. Yeah. <laughs> okay. Cool. But I, I was uh -huh. lucky enough to to uh, hear about this guy who was from my same hometown, mm -hmm. and I stalked him basically until he realized that I wasn't going anywhere. And he was the person who told me uh, you should do a short film. And, yeah, and, and, okay. and you know they've got laws against that sort of thing now, right? Not yeah. in Mexico. <laughs> Mexico is cool. I know, yeah. And so, okay, cool. so yeah. So he he says you should do some short films, and uh -huh. I, and I and I you know I did my first short back in 2007. Uh, and you did very well. I did very well. I, I mean, it, it, it was a big budget short. I shot it for $50. Uh -huh. And so uh, then a year after, one at the Cannes Film Festival, and that opened a lot of doors for me to come to the United States. And, uh -huh. and, and, and how know. long have you been in the United States now? Um, it's coming uh, 10 years now. 10 years, Ten years. man. Yeah. That's amazing. I, I originally came for six months. I thought I was coming uh -huh. back, and so, but it turned into 10 years. So. Wow. Yeah. And, and so you, you're having a lot of fun then? Man, it's been a it's been a it's been a whole ride, and I'm yeah. re I'm really grateful uh, for a lot of people that uh, that supported me here. So, so what brought you to Hawaii? What what was the impetus for coming here to the islands? Um, well, I mean, I had never been here before, and uh -huh. I've always wanted to come. And I've heard so many beautiful things about the island, and it's been kind of like a dream to come. Uh -huh. um, that was my uh, that's my line. Hey, it's, sorry, it's, whatever. That's <laughs> my dream. I stole it. <laughs> <laughs> and so, what did you get to do while you were here? Man, we've done everything. Yeah. Like we went to the North Shore today. We went and got shaved ice. Uh -huh. We went to the pipeline. Oh, cool, um, yeah. We went to go um, see turtles, but there were no turtles today. No, no turtles. So we were really yeah, they're shopping. About. It's it's Cyber Monday, so they're uh, all shopping. They're we, went to, yeah, we went yeah. to Dukes. You went to Dukes? Yeah, I yeah, want to go to KFC, KFC, too, but uh, oh. just to experience it in Hawaii. <laughs> <laughs> that hasn't happened. Yeah, yeah, we went to a luau uh -huh. last night. Yeah, oh, which wow. one did you go to? Um, Paradise, see, Paradise Cove. Cove. Paradise yeah. Cove, that's a great one. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. It was beautiful. So you had a good time then. Did they get you up on the stage or? They did. I, of oh, course. Oh, no, really? You can't keep me off the stage. <laughs> <laughs> like, I went up there. They didn't even ask me. <laughs> no kidding. No. <laughs> <laughs> but oh, yeah, it was, it was fun. Yeah, awesome. I, I didn't go upstairs. You, you didn't no. go on a stage? Went, when they started doing that, I went to the bathroom. Yeah, no, he <laughs> yeah. took the pictures. Oh, really? Yeah, yeah. okay, great. Fantastic. Yeah. So now um, you're here promoting the, these films, and these films have done very well. These, are, these films are getting a lot of attention. 
Yeah, I mean, the, one of them hasn't come out yet. It comes out uh, this Friday. It's called Man Down. Mm -hmm. um, and it deals with PTSD and, you know, our veterans coming from abroad and, and kind mm -hmm. of what they have to deal with. And I think the film really shows um, it in a real way, uh, yes. what what our veterans, you know, have to go through when they come home from, from fighting. Right. Um, so it's, it's, it's a really tough, powerful film. It's a tough road. Yeah, it's really beautiful and it kind of uh, puts you in the world, really, mm -hmm. where you, you kind of are experiencing what they're experiencing. Yes, um, yeah, it's, tough. Yeah. it's tough. I'm a former Marine, so okay. I, I know, you know, you sort of get that adrenaline rush, you know, when you're in combat situation, there's always that adrenaline pump going yeah. all the time. And you come back to the States and it's all of a sudden somebody's took you, taking your, taking your, that, that adrenaline pump away from you. Yeah. And I know a lot of Marines, they end up going back looking for that adrenaline pump again. Exactly, yeah. And, yeah. and that, this film really um, shows it, uh, mm -hmm. kind of, in, you're experiencing it, mm -hmm. is how it feels. So, yeah, I, I That's think great. That's amazing. Check it out. Yeah. And where, where will people find this film? Oh, I mean, it's going to open nationwide, so on on Friday, so they can just go to the theater. And okay, great. And get a ticket <laughs> and buy a ticket and go watch yeah. the film. Yeah. Okay, awesome. Mm -hmm. And then you were you were the directing on this film? Or no. You uh, what were you doing in this film? No, I, I'm I'm not related to this film. Uh, oh, okay. Uh, in in any capacity, they didn't invite me. So. <laughs> okay. Just, so what yeah. was the film? The last film that you just did. Um, well, I did, a, I did a film for HBO called The Walk, and then uh -huh. um, I just recently finished the uh, Fox Directors program, so I was shadowing a great director uh, named Darren Serafian, uh -huh. and basically this program is you're trying to break into TV in episodic, and uh, what that means is trying to get a director's job for one of the big shows. And okay. so I um, I was shadowing a uh, Fox uh, show called Rosewood. Rosewood, yes. wow, okay. Well, you know, if there was ever a time that there was an opportunity in film, it has to be today. Oh, for yeah. sure. Yeah, totally. yeah. And both of you come from a Hispanic background, mm -hmm. right? Mm -hmm. Okay. Totally. Now, it, how do you find now uh, being in Hollywood as Hispanics? How, are you finding the doors are opening to you? Is this, is, you still have to do a lot more door knocking or is it? In the, you wanna, uh, no, I, I mean, I, I feel like uh, from my experience um, in mm -hmm. acting, I, I feel that before, um, Latinos were represented in a very stereotypical way, um, you know, mm -hmm. the chola or like the gangster. And I feel now um, there are a lot more opportunities and it's a lot more of a broad spectrum of different types of Latin characters, you know, and it doesn't have to be that stereotypical gangster or whatever. And, and there's been a lot of kind of trailblazers, I think. Um, oh, we saw Jennifer Lopez, for example. Right. I mean, she's like a very common person that you'd see in yeah. this film these days. Zoe Saldana, uh -huh. Gina Rodriguez, like, yes. um, they've kind of really paved the way, you know, for us younger, like, coming up. Uh -huh. um, uh -huh. Yeah, to, to kind of get more different broad roles, like, yeah. And you're not necessarily having to fit a stereotype. Exactly. So yeah. that's nice. You can play the lead in a film. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, okay. actually, actually get, the, <laughs> yeah. get the, the role. Right, yeah, yeah. so it's, it's a good time, and there is so much work out there. There's so many shows, there's so many different networks, and they mm -hmm. really, the time is now, you know, where they are really looking to have different ethnicities and, and yes. different people and faces where you, you can see yourself. Well, we, we, we aren't the makeup that we used to be. You know, in the United States today, our makeup is much more broad, uh, uh, covers much more broad spectrum than it did you know, years ago. Right. Um, you know, uh, the Hispanic vote is now a very powerful vote. Mm -hmm. uh, although it's not necessarily, you know, any one direction. Yeah. I mean, it, now you have to sort of address uh, a myriad of, of people with different political philosophies. Yeah. Um, the Hispanics aren't necessarily one political philosophy. Right. <laughs> uh, yeah. So, yeah, right? Uh, yeah. And you're coming from, you're coming from Colombia. Yes. You're coming from Mexico. That's true. Um, right. Which part of Mexico? Um, I was born in Mexico City, but I was raised in, a, in the most amazing town in Mexico, which is called Tampico, uh -huh. in the state of Tamaulipas. So yeah, it's, it's a beautiful, beautiful place. It's a beautiful place. They yeah. shot uh, the Treasure of Sierra Madre opening. Oh, and, really? Yeah, that's, we're very proud of that, but not a lot of people know that. Uh -huh. yeah. And um, was there, is there much opportunity? Are you finding that in Mexico itself? Is, there a, is it opening up in to the film, in, film Totally. Industry? Like now, I mean, I, there's a great guys working um, uh, in Hollywood now that they're not, you know, besides the obvious ones, which are, you know, Iñárritu and Cuarón and, and mm -hmm. Del Toro, who, who obviously, like she was saying, in, in behind the camera, they're opening the doors for us, the, the ones that are trying to get in. Mm -hmm. uh, but yeah, like now, there's tons of production in Mexico. I mean, now there's definitely more uh, uh, opportunities and platforms for Mexicans to, to try to get their stuff out there. And uh, I, there's a big boom and, and in, in production in Mexico City. And now, for example, my hometown, I remember uh -huh. back in 2007, like 
there wasn't any YouTube or anything, like you couldn't find anybody who was interested in making films. And now there's film festivals, the first film festival, and there's these kids, you know, getting access to cameras and just trying to get their stuff out there. Isn't that amazing? It's incredible. And, and the stuff that they come up with is it's incredible. so incredible. Yeah. Look, you I, know? I used to think, I mean, now you, anybody who has a good idea mm -hmm. has no excuse to not execute it. And everything is so, um, with social media and like all these people that are trying to find new talent, seriously, it's, anybody has a chance to do something yeah. and, and to get a job. Like now you're getting a job just with pictures you take on Instagram and if they're good pictures, people reach out to you and like, hey, you want a you know, photography job? And it's just there's so many things going on and, and it's the time to do it now. For so sure. yeah, so yeah. we're going we're gonna to take a short break and then what we're going to do, we're going to come back. We, I want to talk a little bit more about this because I think this is, this is like if you're trying to sort of get young people excited about the film industry, I think you both have a lot to say that to inspire young people. So we're going to take a short break. I'm Chris Leeds with The Economy and You, and we'll be right back, so stay tuned for more. Aloha. Aloha, everyone. I hope you've been watching Think Tech Hawaii, but I'm here to invite you to watch me on Viva Hawaii every Monday at 3 p.m. I'm waiting for you. Mahalo. Aloha. My name is Danelia, D-A-N-E-L-I-A. -E and I'm the other half of the duo. John Newman, welcome. We are co-hosts of a show called Keys to Success, which is live on the Think Tech Live Network series, weekly on Thursdays at 11 a.m. We're looking forward to seeing you then. Aloha. Aloha. My name is Reg Baker, and I'm the host of Business in Hawaii with Reg Baker. We're a show that broadcasts live every Thursday from 2 to 2.30. We highlight success stories in Hawaii of both businesses and individuals. We learn their secrets to success, which is always valuable. I hope to see you on our next show. Aloha. Yeah. <laughs> okay, we're back. Hi, I'm Chris Leatham and this is The Economy and You. Today's guests are Jennifer Cadena and Alonzo Alvarez Barreda. That's you, about as good as I can get it. I think it gets better every time. <laughs> it gets better every time. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> okay. Yeah, sure. um, so you're both are, you're you're both working in the filming industry, and we were talking about how exciting it is to, to be able to have opportunities, you know, to see young people come out and explore their skills and uh, develop their talents in this industry, and all the opportunities that come with this. What would you say to encourage young people, and how would you sort of give them a, a um, what advice would you give them to sort of get started? I mean, I think uh, <coughs> important things is, is to have the drive and to have the passion and mm -hmm. to just um, stay authentic to yourself and okay. don't try to, you know, please other people um, and to, to just pursue it and to work hard because that's really all it takes, I think, is just hard work, dedication, and um, just the desire to just, do it. Just the willingness to yeah. stand to in put those in long the work. lines, yeah. those cattle lines. <laughs> yeah. what they call those cattle calls, right? Yeah, cattle calls. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. And yeah. You, you spend a lot of time going to... Um, a lot. A lot of time. <laughs> yeah, and I mean, I, I, I grew up in Hollywood. I was born in Hollywood. Mm -hmm. um, both my parents are Colombian, uh, but my mom, because, you know, of acting, she I was born in Hollywood. Um, and I think that as many busloads of people that I see coming into Hollywood, you know, mm -hmm. every week of, you know, hungry actors or directors, I think the same amount are getting on those buses and, and going back again. home. Yeah, yeah because yeah, they, yeah, yeah. they give it, you know, two years or a year and, and they get, you know, they feel like, oh, I didn't make it in two years, so, you know, I'm, I'm a failure. But really, it's just putting in putting in that time because it takes a lot longer than two years. They say it takes like 10 years. 10 and years, I think that's, wow. that's true. So if you're four, now is the time to start going to cattle calls. <laughs> yeah. So you'll get the roles by the time you're 14 or 15, you'll start exactly. picking up the juicy roles. Right. That's tough. Yeah. Yeah, it is. So it is a tough business to get into. It definitely is because you just you have to put the time in and, and it takes time to, mm -hmm. to meet people and, and there's just so many different layers to it. You know, for acting specifically, it's, you know, getting your headshots, getting your agent, getting to know the casting directors, getting to know directors, and that just all takes time and, mm -hmm. and hard work and perseverance. And they kind of have to trust you, too. There's a level of trust, right, that you're yeah. going to show up, that you're not going to lose your mind and yeah. become bipolar in the right. middle of a movie. and be late. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah. yeah. <laughs> and yeah. for you, as, a, as somebody who's, who's working behind the scenes, how would you suggest young people get started? Where, where, do, they, where do they start to sow their, you know, plant the seeds for success? I mean... Everybody has their own story. I, I, I don't know uh, if I could give the best advice. I think everybody finds their own way. And mm -hmm. what I found that worked for me was 
that uh, I feel, I think the one thing I did right in my life, and I think it's only been one thing, was that I figured out what I wanted to do very early on. Uh -huh. and, and, I, and I knew that I, I knew that I had to do it, and I knew that I was willing to go all the, all the way to the end of the race. And so if you have that clear path in your mind, you just don't take your mind off of it. And you dedicate every breath you, you give to, to, to create opportunities for you. Behind uh -huh. the camera, it's a different process, I think, because uh, at least what I do is I'm always trying to stay uh, creating material for me. Like, I don't have a name. Like, nobody's giving me scripts for free. Uh -huh. So I just constantly i am writing, and I'm trying to create material and opportunities for me. And, uh, and I think that's it might be a, a good advantage that we have behind the camera because, uh -huh. I mean, nobody gives you the stuff when you start, but you can create those opportunities, and you can write. And nowadays, with online courses and books and everything, all this knowledge and, and opportunities at your hand, uh, I feel like yeah. you have all these avenues to, 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 to make it on your own. And, and it takes uh -huh. time, like Jenny was saying. You know, I mean, I've been doing this for 10 years, right. and I'm finally breaking into episodic TV. So, so. Col collaboration, is, a, is, a, is there a lot of collaboration? Is that an imperative here? You have to do a lot of yes. collaborating yeah. with other people? Yeah, I mean, yeah. I mean, filmmaking definitely is something that you don't do alone. Like, mm -hmm. I, I would never have done the films I've done without tons of people behind you know a short film uh -huh. that I did is like 15 minutes it's a year of my life and wow. it's 70 people behind it and and so it's definitely a team sport like nobody does it alone yeah yeah and you're only as good as the people you surround yourself with that that would be an advice too like yeah like you, you have to create your own uh, circle of trust and because uh -huh. they're either gonna take you up or down and, uh -huh. and and you have to be very careful in who you choose to trust and because it's, it's so tough, sometimes man. there are people that you sort of meet. You go, oh yeah, they're great, and then after a while you're so maybe yeah, I have this sort it of. It happens <laughs> a lot. <laughs> yeah, it happens yeah. a lot, and and, and yeah. I learned that the in Mexico we <coughs> a handshake. It's uh, it's your contract. In the U.S., uh, a contract is a contract. The contract so, is so, a yeah. contract. Yeah. yeah. Uh -huh. totally. The handshake's a nice. Yeah, like okay, yeah, we're having a great conversation, mm -hmm. but yeah. at the end of the day, it's what you put down on pen and paper. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, uh, so when you're when you're meeting people like this, sort of, have, what is the what do you think is the, the thing for especially for the Latino community? Where do you think that you see the growth in the industry coming from? Um, uh, yeah, uh, I don't know. <laughs> well, the growth in the industry. Yeah. I, I think now uh, Hollywood and, and a lot of heads of studio and people are realizing that that there's more voices out there um, mm -hmm. that have interesting things to say. Mm -hmm. And so literally now is the best time because they are looking for like, you know, you've heard about the diversity and the Oscars so white or so black right. or whatever. I right. mean, it's just now it, it's funny to say and, and I hear it and it, I think it makes me laugh. It, it being a diverse artist, whether it's in front or behind the camera, uh -huh. uh, it's like a commodity now. Like I've been in directing programs where yeah. they're actually looking for diverse people and that goes like from people mm -hmm. from Asia, uh, African American, uh, Mexican. So all of a sudden, if I'm in a room with ten people and I'm the only Mexican, that's the card you play. So like when they ask you what you do, I'm like I'm from Mexico, and they kind of want to know what what's going on down there oh. and, 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 a, and a different point of view. So I think the growth of the industry now is f they realize that there are a lot of interesting people that with different stories, new stories, yes. new faces. Yes. I mean, there's a lot of Mexican guys working in shows now on TV that nobody knows. We have this great filmmaker, Everardo Gaut, Mexico City, uh -huh. and he's you know he just shot this uh, pilot for National Geographic in March. Like, there's a lot of talent now, but, and their studios are looking for these people, so now it's the time. Well, you know, one of the things that I've noticed is, um, even in, in commercials, mm -hmm. the people that you see in a commercial today don't fit sort of the mold of a stereotypical white person. Exactly. Right. They're a little bit more sort of Mediterranean, I guess, black, for lack of a better term. They sort of maybe you, uh, not as well defined. Yeah. You know. Yeah. Now, ambiguous. Uh, yeah, yeah, ambiguous. Like, there you, you go. Know. Like I have two daughters that are half Chinese, right? <laughs> so now if you look at one of them, she looks white, more more Caucasian, but you're going right. mm, something's not quite there. And the other one, you know, she looks Asian, but then she's not like totally Asian, you know. So. I've got I've got two daughters on sort of both spectrums, you know. Yeah, so, yeah, yeah. Yeah, so it's interesting, and you know, one of them's a dancer and choreographer, and mm -hmm. so she's in and out of LA a lot, you know, and uh, working. And I think that's also a strength for her, mm -hmm. you know. Um, so I, I think this is great. Now, what do you what do you sort of envisage for your future at at this point? Do you so do you have other things lined up coming coming? I, I do. I mean, I, I'm doing a lot of voiceovers right now, mm -hmm. and I'm really um, trying to break into doing cartoons. Um, that's like one of my dreams is to do cartoons. Um, 
but yeah, I just doing more film and, and kind of also creating my own content uh -huh. um, and maybe producing my own, um, you know, films and scripts. So cartoons, now that sounds like a lot of fun. It's super fun. <laughs> yeah, <it>? yeah. <laughs> yeah. You're in the studio a lot, though. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. But you get to be very creative with your voice. Right. Yeah. That's fun. Like I was, I was telling you before earlier about the frog on the motorcycle. Yeah. You've got to go watch. If you go to YouTube and check out the frog on the motorcycle, mm -hmm. it's the funniest thing you've ever seen. <laughs> uh, and then you're doing, um, you're doing more films. Do you have more films here in the U.S.? Or are you planning to go? Over? Yeah, um, I've I spent a year working on a script. I wrote my first feature. So far, oh. I've, I've done uh, uh, four short films that uh, went on and, and won some awards and, and played on a film festival circuit. So I came to a point where I dedicated myself to write uh, my first uh, feature, which I'm hoping to shoot and. Uh, and uh, next year. Wow. So I literally have been trying to do that. And the opportunities on TV now, as, as you know, like there's, I mean, TV is like killing it. Like that's where uh -huh. there's some great shows out there. And so I'm, I'm trying to break into episodic. So this, um, I might have a, I might be shooting, might. Might. <laughs> might be shooting uh, an episode of uh, Rosewood uh, in the next season. Oh, so, okay. So, so that's, that's exciting. It's very exciting. That's exciting because then you get a chance to really get hands on. Yes. And you have yeah. other people sort of mentoring you as you do this. Exactly. Yeah. Uh, that's awesome. And then you, you once you, you get the first episode, that's the, the threshold you, you, you know, you have to cross and then other things fall. Then the other the doors place. open up for you. Hopefully. Mm -hmm. Wow. Hopefully. Yeah. So, but yeah. As long as you do a really good job. Yeah, yeah exactly. <laughs> unless you, unless you don't, yeah, 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 yeah. Exactly. Yeah, so there's a little pressure there. It is a lot of pressure. Uh -huh. But I mean, I think in a way that pressure gets your senses and then you, you sharpens you sharpens you and yeah then, at least in my in my case uh -huh. I, I guess and it's a good pressure yeah because yeah. if now you're like taking naps or whatever then it doesn't work <laughs> well, where do you find time to write my gosh that's crazy <laughs> that's a good question that, yeah. that, that's a great question um i mean i know a lot of actors have two jobs you know mm -hmm. and, and it's mm -hmm. tough because you you go on a i don't know just for for instance you're a waiter or a waitress mm -hmm. and you take a shift that it's really tough and then uh, you have to balance that with auditions, and then you're almost like getting fired because you you try. I mean, it really tests you what what's your priority. Like either pay rent or pursue mm -hmm. my career, mm -hmm. and that's yeah. that's a. In my case, I, I realized quickly that if I wanted to complete a first draft of my feature, I needed to do something because I couldn't. I'm, I don't have the talent of ha having a two job and, and go work a shift and then go and sit down on a computer and just start typing. Like uh. my, once my shift is done, I don't want to see a computer. Like I don't want to rest. <laughs> so I figure out like I need to do something. So in my my answer to you is, I I, I contacted some investors that I that I've worked with in the past and mm -hmm. and I told them a plan and I we made some commitments and I got funded for a couple of years and wow. so like and that that was a, a decision I, I tried to make and, and it worked out but so now that gives you the time to write exactly so now I'm, I'm technically getting paid to write and I have deadlines and so like I, mm -hmm. I get an X amount of money per month to write and so I don't have to go on and get another job Wow, that's Ho great. Which hopefully next year won't, won't change. Will change. Yeah, yeah. Right. that's right. <laughs> yeah. And you're and and are you, you're no longer having to do the the waitress gigs anymore. No, I'm not right now. Yeah, 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 <laughs> I've yeah, been yeah. out of it for for a few years. So, but that's great. but it's uh, yeah. I mean, it, it was definitely really difficult when I was doing that because you uh -huh. really have to you know, put your, your priorities of what's number one. And, you know, the last, the, my last waitressing job, mm -hmm, um, mm -hmm. I, I had been there for five years. If you want to see some good looking waiters and waitresses, <laughs> I'm telling you, go to LA. <laughs> <laughs> you see some of the best looking people working in the restaurant field. It's been, yeah. it's fantastic, you know. I, I you know, I've been down to, to Hollywood and, and Beverly Hills in that area and you see all these people with tape on their noses and yes. <laughs> <laughs> yes yeah but that's the thing is you meet so many waiters that are you know a director aspiring writer mm -hmm. aspiring actress and i think the biggest <coughs> um, difference is is if they put their priority of you know uh, first i'm an actor second i'm a waiter this is just you know my day job mm -hmm. and because there were so many times where i had this huge audition but then i had this shift that I had to work and and you have to think, okay, am I gonna go to this mm -hmm. big audition or am I gonna can miss, I can I find somebody to cover work? my shift? Right, and if yeah. you can't, you're yeah. put in this situation constantly. And I always would I made a promise to myself that I would never ever ever miss an audition. Well, now I know why service work. sucks in <laughs> L.A. <laughs> yeah, well, I got fired. So. <laughs> yeah. If you <laughs> so don't go out and eat during big cattle calls. Right. Yes, don't, don't go do eating. Yeah, <laughs> all the waiters are gone. <laughs> Everybody's at the studio, yeah. Yeah. Oh, that's too funny. 
So let's. Uh, so we got a couple minutes left, um, and you've got a few films that you were here. Can you go over these films? Just maybe give us a brief, on sure. a, a, like Crescendo, for example. Oh yeah, I mean, I mean, Crescendo we made a few years ago, um, but it won over 23, 25 film festivals. Um, mm -hmm. It was kind of everywhere, and it was really powerful, seen by so many people. Now, where, pe so where can people watch this film? On YouTube. On YouTube, it's yeah. on YouTube, mm -hmm. and it's called Crescendo. Yes. Yes. Okay, yes. cool, cool. And then the film that's coming out called Man Down, that's coming out shortly. Yes, that's coming out yes. this Friday, and I have a movie coming out next year that I'm acting in called Driver X. Driver X. Yeah, with uh, Patrick Fabian. Okay. Okay, very cool. Mm -hmm. Okay, and then you're coming back to Hawaii to visit us again? I hope so. Yes? Good, great, great, great. <laughs> yeah. yeah, I hope so. Yeah, great. I, I am so glad that you were both able to make the show today, Alonzo, okay. and, and, and uh, I hope to see you doing more interesting things and more interesting films. I hope so, too, yes. and, I, and I hope to be back, uh, get invited back. I hope this interview was all right. Yeah, yeah, yeah I think you did yeah. great. <laughs> So I think in Spanish, and then I'm trying to translate to English. Oh, is that right? It doesn't necessarily come out I can't well. even tell. I, I can't tell. So you're doing <laughs> great. Then that's great. Uh -huh. Cool. And Jennifer, we'll see you back here, and yeah. hopefully you'll be back here promoting more, movie, Thank more you. movies. Yes. And not just coming to visit. And, right. But if you do come back to visit, that's great, too. <laughs> I'm, I, okay. Well, I'm Chris Leatham. This is The Economy and You, and we'll look forward to seeing you again next week right here on Think Tech Hawaii. Aloha.